Hello, and welcome to Friday STEAM. Um, we are coming to you from summer reading at the Warren County Library. Um, this summer, of course, we are online, but our libraries will soon be doing curbside pickup, so that's really big news. But for now, all of our programming is here on Facebook and YouTube and Zoom. So I will be coming to you every Friday for summer reading at 4 p.m. instead of 2 p.m. like we've been doing. Um, so that should be exciting, a little bit later in the day. Maybe you're out at the pool or doing other at the lake. Um, so I'm really excited to get to see you again. My name is Sandy Roberts, and I am the Makerspace Coordinator at the Warren County Library System. And uh, I do all the STEM programming and Maker stuff. So I have Maker Camp for you this summer. I have Maker Mondays. We have Friday STEAM. We have TREPS Entrepreneurship Program coming up. Uh, we've got coding classes, we've got tool time, we've got Lego lovers. I mean, there's a steam story time with Miss Erin. We've got all kinds of really fun stuff. So if you're a maker and a doer and an inventor, we've got tons of good things for you to do this uh, summer. Okay, I am following along just so you know on Facebook. So if you have any questions as we go or comments, you just let me know and I will do my best to answer your questions. Um, today, our project is a cereal box, or in this case, cracker box, racer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be building these little little guys out of a bit of cork and some toothpicks. And then we're gonna use the power of sound to make them move. Let's see if I can demonstrate. I'm gonna have to do it under the thing. But the idea is we're gonna use a tube like this to make them move. So this project is actually from a really great book called Make Fun. It's not available on Hoopla, but since curbside is coming, you may be able to find that one, okay, in our catalog. It's got a lot of great projects uh, for making your own toys. And I thought with Father's Day coming up and with it being summertime, wouldn't it be fun to make a game that you can play with anybody? So that's our idea today. Let's go over what we need in the way of materials. All right, get in my tray. First things first, safety gear is gonna be important today. You're gonna to want a pair of goggles or glasses or something like that to protect your eyes just because we're gonna be cutting lots of small things like toothpicks and they tend to go flying if you're not careful. So I really do suggest some safety goggles. You are gonna need a couple of wine corks or even bottle caps, like um, bottle caps off of disposable water bottle. They'll work for this too. Um, but wine corks are really great. The synthetic kind, you know, the kind of faux wine corks work a little bit better because they're easier to cut and we will be cutting them. But your regular standard wine cork will work in a pinch. You just have to make it a little bit bigger. So you need wine corks. You're, of course, going to need some kind of a cereal box, a cracker box, a pizza box. Um, thinner cardboard is best for this one because it vibrates a little bit better. So you're going to need that. You're going to need some toothpicks. I have... Um, these are like the fancy cocktail toothpicks. They're rounded. You can use flat if you want. You can also use dental picks. You can use bamboo skewers. Anything that comes down to a nice, tiny, fine point. We wanna have as little bit of these legs touching our box as possible so we get the most movement. We wanna reduce friction. And if we reduce the um, contact between them, we reduce the friction between them and we get more motion, okay? So you're gonna need some toothpicks. Let's see. And then you're gonna need some tools, okay? Couple of things. You are gonna want, you can use scissors to cut your toothpicks, but better are diagonal cutters if you have them. These are fairly inexpensive. You can get them at the hardware store, you can get them at the dollar store. So a pair of diagonal cutters, really useful for this, but you, you can use your scissors too. Kitchen scissors are probably a little stronger for this. So whichever you have, I'll be using diagonal cutters. Your scissors will work. You are going to need um, a screwdriver or a craft knife, or in my case, an awl, okay, with a point, because we're going to need to poke holes into our cork. There are a lot of ways to do that. A little screwdriver will work. An awl is fantastic for that, and that's what I'll be using. You can even use a pencil to poke your holes, okay? You're going to need some kind of a knife to cut your cork. And this is one thing, if you're a younger kid, you're gonna want help from mom and dad. Um, I'm using a box cutter today to cut my corks, but a um, craft knife will work. And if you are working with younger kids, a serrated steak knife will work really well for this too. And that gives them the chance to maybe saw the cork themselves with your supervision. 
Okay, so you do need to be able to cut your cork. And then kind of an optional thing, I found that a pair of needle nose pliers or any kind of pliers helped me really push the toothpick into the cork as I was going. So you may want those, they can help um, for hands that maybe aren't as strong. And last but not least, you're gonna need a bit of glue. Um, and I mean a bit, not much. Any white glue will work, it dries pretty quickly. I have an easy tack glue here, um, but really, your straight up Elmer's will work. You only need a tiny bit. So, um, okay, so corks, toothpicks, box, scissors, some something to cut your cork with, glue, and safety glasses. Last but not least, a toilet paper tube or a um, paper towel tube that we're gonna use and we're actually gonna blow and talk through our tube because we're gonna use the sound of our voice to make our racers move. So how does that work exactly? How does my voice make something move? Well, to understand that, we need to understand the science of sound. See, sound is an energy, right? And it travels in waves through pretty much anything. That sound vibrates whatever it moves through. And if you've ever done something like talk into a tube, you can feel it shake when you talk. Well, my voice is coming to you right now because my vocal cords are vibrating and shaking in my throat and that vibrates the air that's in my throat. And that vibration gets passed along, almost like if you knock down dominoes. That sound wave shakes the next particle and the next particle and the next little molecule of air all the way through until it gets somewhere that it can be absorbed. In the case of humans, that's these tiny little bones in our ear, okay, that then shake and our nerves in our brain can understand what those shakes mean. It's pretty amazing when you stop and think about how much had to evolve for us to be able to not only speak, but understand what we say. It's amazing stuff. Let me show you a quick picture here. If I can do this. All right, so what you see here is basically sound waves traveling through the air. So they kind of have rise and fall, right? Kind of a boof, 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 if you've ever heard music. <laughs> um, and so you have points where the particles are all kind of pushed together and points where they kind of spread out. And that energy actually travels over the material. It could be water, can be air, can be, in our case, a cereal box until it gets to where it's going, usually our ears. Now, we're gonna use that vibration today from our voices to actually shake the box instead of our ears. And when the box shakes, our little racer is gonna to shake too. Let me show you what that looks like and then we'll get building. Let's switch our cameras. Okay, so here's my box. I just kinda of wanna show you how this works. Here's one of my little racers. Here is my tube. So you're gonna hold the tube kind of against the box and <laughs> do you see it moving? Now what's really fun to play with with this is figuring out what um, sounds make it move the most. <laughs> um, so to make our racer, there's a lot of experimentation and prototyping you can do with making your little racer. I went with a standard flared um, three-legged racer here. I'm gonna hold that up, can you see that? So it's just three little legs coming out of my racer and I put them all on kind of a 45 degree, maybe a 30 degree angle out from my cork. I did my cork at about an inch tall, okay? So it's, it's not lightweight. Um, you can make it thinner if you want to make an even lighter weight cork and I'm gonna go ahead and do that so we can compare today. You can actually put these legs at different angles. For example, you can have them all tilted in one direction to see what difference that makes to how your, um, your little racer moves. And then I mentioned plastic caps. Here's one made with a plastic cap. I stuck a piece of cork in and then did the um, legs that way. But you could put holes directly into the cap and glue on your uh, legs. For that, you might actually wanna use hot glue to make them stick a little, like, faster. But there are a lot of things you can do. Even, where did he go? This is a little bit of pool noodle, okay? And some googly eyes, put legs on that, and he can be all over the place. I'm gonna do that too. 
So let's talk about constructing our racer. I'm gonna grab a cork, okay? If you have a ruler, it can be helpful to make sure that all of your legs end up the same length because the last thing you want is to have, you know, this guy kind of like tipped over. I'm gonna zoom in for while we work here. Okay. Now, as I said, I'm gonna use a box cutter to cut this. You can use whatever you think, whatever um, you want. You can use a craft knife, you can use um, a serrated knife. So as you can see, my last racer was about half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch tall. I'm gonna make this one about half that height. So I'm gonna take my pencil, just kind of mark how thick I want him. I'm gonna go it's pretty thin on this one because I wanna really compare. And this is what's fun is that it's such a great opportunity to um, experiment with some physics and to really get our engineering minds going. So I'm just carefully, carefully cutting my cork. And this takes a little bit of effort. And this is why, especially kids, you might wanna work with mom and dad on this one. Don't want you using a box cutter without mom's or dad's permission. Oh no, it just went flying. Okay, we're gonna cut it again. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Let's see if I can make this one not go flying off my table. And you just kind of take your time, be patient as you go. And I, like I said, a serrated knife, steak knife can be really useful for this. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe that I just sent another one flying. Guys, I will be right back. I'm gonna go grab that. <laughs> Sorry, this did not happen when I practiced. Ah, the fun of live stream. Okay, we're back. So now I've got my piece of cork cut. I'm gonna grab my awl, like I said. You could use a pencil. See, that works really nicely to make a hole. You could use pretty much anything. I'm gonna grab my diagonal cutters. Now, again, I have a mat here that helps me measure. You might need to use a ruler. Last time I did this, I cut each of my legs about three quarters of an inch, and I'm gonna go ahead with that again because I felt like that was a pretty good length. So, I did, yeah, I did. Maybe I did half an inch. Anyway, I'm gonna go three quarters. I'm just gonna use my pencil to mark, a little mark where that is. And I'm going to use my diagonal cutters. Now, when I cut something like this, so I don't wanna send it rolling all over the place, hold both sides and snip. Okay, so I've got one. I wanna make sure that each is the same length. So even if I'm not measuring exactly what my length is, I'm gonna line them up. Let's see if I can do this for you so you can see what I'm doing. Line these up together and I'm gonna mark with my pencil. Okay, and here I'll show you doing it with a pair of scissors. Not hard. There's my mark. Come in with a pair of scissors and see, cuts pretty well with that too. So, and I've got one more to do. You can do four legs if you want to. You can do five legs. I wouldn't recommend that you go less than three because less than three, it's gonna be very challenging to um, get it to stand up, but you can give that a try if you want to. It's your little racer, so you can do what you want. All right, I've got my three little legs. I'm gonna go ahead and just, now notice what I'm doing here. My pencil, I'm not sticking it in. Oops, I'm not showing you. I'm not sticking my pencil in straight. I'm putting it in at a bit of an angle, and that's gonna help me angle my legs when I add them. And again, you could put all of them going in the same direction if you wanna kind of make them a little bit different racer. Okay, and now I just need a bit of glue. And what I'm gonna do is just, just squeezing out a bit of glue. I take my little legs here. I just put some glue on them. And like I said, you only need a tiny, tiny bit and then push it into the hole. Now, if you have good, strong hands, you could probably just do that. These legs are pretty long. I'm kind of thinking I should have shortened them, but we'll go with it. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna just use a pair of pliers to kind of help me set them. Here we go. More glue. And 
set that one in nicely. There we go. And last one. More blue. And in that goes. So pretty easy to create. Now I do want to make sure is it flat? Does he oh look he's lopsided. So I gotta figure out where which one is a little bit too long. Okay. Make sure they're nice and balanced. And there we go. I've got a nice little racer. And he's as you can see, he's he's got a shorter top but a much longer leg, so we can see which one kind of does better. I also want to take my little again, this is a piece of pool noodle, some uh, little pipe cleaners. Some Google eyes and I made a little bee. I'm gonna grab a couple more of my toothpicks and check this out. I'm gonna see. I don't know. Can I do it? I might be able to do it. I'm gonna try cutting all three at once. <laughs> Actually, I should do four for him. I'm gonna give him four legs because he's rectangular, and I'm worried that if I only give him three legs, he's not gonna not gonna stand up so well. Let's see if I can cut all of them at once. I don't. Nope. That's not gonna be a good idea, Sandy. See. Not really worth it to try and rush, is it? Okay, just gonna take my pencil, gonna give him little half inches, and again, I'm always gonna make sure I'm holding both sides carefully. And you should be wearing goggles doing this just in case. That's why I have my goggles. Okay. And then I'm just going to flip him over. And because this is foam, I don't even need to really be worried about um, poking a hole. He's going really very, very simply right on into the foam. In you go, buddy. <laughs> more and here we go so now I have my little fuzzy buddy ready to go okay let's do a quick cleanup make some space to test it out he looks a little eerie staring up at you doesn't he hello what am I doing <laughs> oh, I'm so glad, Karen, that you're going to do this with your grandkids. I think they'll really have fun. It's, it, and you get kind of competitive about it, let me tell you. So here's our, our um, box. And you can, of course, if you are doing this as a gift, you can decorate this really cool. You can make it like a racetrack or whatever you want to do. You're going to go ahead and put your little racers on your box. And this is fun because you can all have, have all your different racers kind of competing I don't know. This one's very heavy. I don't know how well he's going to do. Now, your tube, the length of your tube is going to make a difference too. So a shorter tube may work differently than a longer tube. But here we go. Now you got to get the perfect woo. Woo! Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Okay, I'm amusing myself. Now, look at that. This guy is so light. He moved really well. Kind of, and this guy was so heavy, he didn't move at all. So there we go. That's our experiment for us right there, right? So lighter is better for this. <laughs> All right. So you can experiment with different sounds. And you know what's really cool? If you get permission to use um, someone's smartphone and play a song, you put your smartphone right against the box and play a song and they're all gonna wiggle around to the song. Okay, so the vibration, that sound energy is really, really fun to play with. Okay, I'm coming back over to the other camera. So I hope that you enjoy that. I hope that you get creative with your racers and have some fun. Try different boxes, try different um, creations. See what happens if you make them heavier or lighter number of legs, how long the legs are. There's so many different ways you can experiment. And then you can, of course, decorate these guys. You can put Google eyes on there. You can get out some markers and decorate them. You can put some pom-poms on there, throw some glitter on it, have fun, make some really cool creations. Um, 
So if you do, I want to be able to see what you made. So let's see. I have created for you a safe um, place to share your work on Padlet. And there's the website. I will put this also in the comments. Um, and parents, it is moderated. Nothing can get posted that I don't approve. Um, but it's a great place for you to post what you make and you can go and like other people's creations and leave a kind comment or a thumbs up for them. And it's a really fun place to share all your creativity. Now, remember that you want to check our website, warrenlib.org, go up to the event calendar and check out all the amazing fun things we have for you to do this summer. Okay, make sure that you register. Some of them you have to register with an email for Zoom so we can provide a safe experience for you. Um, but there are book clubs, story times, craft classes. We're gonna have animal shows and magicians and music. We have got so many fun things planned for you. And of course, make sure that you have registered uh, for our summer reading program. We're using a app called Beanstack this year and you can earn all kinds of gift cards and earn uh, digital badges. And there are maker badges that you can earn this year too. So make sure you check that out and earn your maker badge, okay? Well, I had so much fun today. I can't wait to see you again. I will be back on Monday. On Monday at noon, we have maker camp that you need to register for. We're gonna be doing some Three Little Pigs engineering. So make sure you register for that because we're gonna get together on Zoom and build together because I miss your faces. Then at 2 p.m. is Maker Monday. That'll be live stream just like this is. And we have lots of different fun projects coming up. On Monday, we'll be using an old necktie to make a pouch for our cell phone or just to keep our goodies in. And then at 3 p.m., we have Animate with Code. And that's a coding class using Scratch, which is very easy for almost anyone to use. And we're gonna learn to make our own animations, our own fairy tale animations, right? Because it's all about invent your story this summer. Imagine your story. So we're gonna use coding to make our own fairy tale animations. And that's at 3 p.m. That one you need to register for as well. So we have a ton of great stuff coming up. Mm. Make sure you check back at five o'clock because my very first tool time series will be posted then. And we're gonna learn all about hammers. So we've got a ton of stuff coming up this summer. I'm excited. I hope that you're excited. I miss being in the makerspace with you, but for now, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you just as soon as we can back at the library. Take care everyone and have a great weekend and happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Mm -hmm.